Hello there and welcome back to Building the Boys. Now I have issue three of Hashtag's Build the Lancaster Bomber. Uh, now there's a lot to do in this one. Um, and we're going to be doing a lot with glass. Now, as a result of that, we're not going to be using the glue we normally use. Now normally I use Loctite Power Gel, but with any soup glue, they can emit like a gas, which can give you foggy glass. We don't want to do that. So we are using Micro Crystal Clear. Now this is exactly what it sounds like. It 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 sets crystal clear, so you're not gonna get that problem. We're gonna use it sparingly when it comes to uh to glass parts though, because again, even though it sets clear, it still sets. So I don't want I don't want lumps of this stuff, you know. Um I don't like having to glue glass in. I've I've never liked that, I've, you know, but it's it's what it is. Um, so we do need some little pieces from uh issue two that are gonna be attached in this one. There has been concern um about oh that's just gonna break off if you attach it now um yeah no not so much i mean again it's it's no not so much i you know i i keep my stuff um secure like i keep it away from everything else it's not it's not gonna snap it's not um but if you don't have that luxury if space is tight which let's face it as modular space is always tight uh my mate dave mack over on dave mack's builds funnily enough just today was uh talking about the space in um space in his workshop so i understand um so if you don't want to glue these pieces on yet don't do you know what i mean leave it to the end it's not going to hurt um if you're worried yours get knocked or bashed or bumped and it's going to get snapped off don't do don't glue it on yet because it's gonna be a long time i would imagine before you're gonna need it and there's there's no real reason these couldn't go on at the very end of the build you know that they're, they're not intricate to the actual the makeup of the model itself so that they're, they're just detailing that could go on at the very end so keep that part safe but not at the end if you need to but um no i i think i think we'll be okay but um at the end of this one we'll be having uh <laughs> one of our talks and we'll be talking about much like the banks and bomb uh necessity's mother invention so because of everything that's gone on world war ii some very wacky ideas were being banded around about things that we could do and you know and some of them all of them as wacky as they sound um have a logic to them uh we're going to talk about one of the most bizarre weapons ever um created at the end of this one um but we're going to talk about for the next four because there's a lot to unpack with this one it sounds mental it sounds like it's not true i swear to you it is um if you haven't yet please remember to like and subscribe without further ado let's get this one open and let's get this one built so this is the kit that we got with part three uh we've got quite a lot in here this is heavy as well, so I'm assuming this is, these are metal pieces. Uh, but before we even get to that, we need everything we had left over from part two, because this is what we'll be working on first. So we'll work on this first, and then we'll be opening the pack and moving on to that one. The other thing we did get, if you're a subscriber, you would have got uh, our first proper gift. Well, our second proper gift, we have the uh, the sign. We got our very lovely wooden Lancaster Bomber pen. Let's uh, get this one out and take a look at it. It is a bit massive as pens go. I mean, it looks like a cigar. But there is our... Focus. Lancaster Bomber. It's nice. It's a nice little thing. It's um it's it's the least practical pen in the world. You've got to unscrew it to uh to actually access it. But it's it is what it is. It's nice. Uh right, so let's move on to what we're doing in part. These are the parts we're working on first. Um so we got the starboard front frame here and we have the bomb aimers controls. Now these are going to fit into here. We've got to make sure we get this the right way around. That's what I would imagine. Is that correct? My old eyes. Nope, that's not correct. Uh, let's get this around the right way. It's that way around. So it's that way around. It's got a bit of a weird fit. That's the, the lug there. There we go. Aha. That makes it. Okay, that fits flush as. Yeah. So that's how we're going to be looking. So we're going to put a little touch of glue on the back of this one, and we're going to install that into there. So we get some glue, we get that done. Okay, so we've got a little touch of glue on the tab there. And we're going to install that tab in place. I'm not really happy with the fit. We're going to hold that in. And that will glue do its job. So that, is that, I'm just going to let it dry. That's where it's going to go. I'm going to let that one dry. Okay, next thing we do is we've got a window to install. So, take in our other metal piece that we had here. It's lovely, those rivets. That's gorgeous, and the paint job on this is lovely. 
Uh, we then have another one of these windows. I'm going to test fit this before we start messing around with glue or anything like that. But that's how that's going to fit. So in there like that. Now, that's already fairly firm. We will glue it. We will glue it, but I'm going to use the I'm use the micro crystal clear to do it. So I'm going to get that ready. I'm going to glue it like glue it. So there we are. Now it looks horrendous. I promise you, it's going to dry clear. You can see this side anyway. We've got none on the actual window itself, um, but it's that will dry clear. You're not going to see any of the white. The white residue is just to show that it's on there, but it will dry completely clear. So that's uh, that's good. Uh, now there is one piece. Now this is the one where it's like mm, I don't know about that. They want us to glue this. To the outside here um huh i just don't think it's wise okay i just don't because i mean even though like i said even though i keep mine um uh i keep mine safe i think at some point we're gonna have to start flipping this over and pushing it together and bolting it on and i think this is such a flimsy little piece i mean look at it it goes it goes in there like so, and you're supposed to glue that in place, and it'll constantly be jutting like that. That's just gonna. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm putting this in the box with the rest of it, and I think that's the last thing we're actually gonna put on the Lancaster. I'm not doing it. That's that's the way it is. You can do it if you want to do it. I'm not doing it because I think inevitably, when we start doing things like that with this, uh, moving it around and trying to get it on stand and whatnot, that piece is just gonna snap off. It's gonna happen. So once this thing is eventually built and it's mounted to the um, it's mounted to the uh, to the frame um, to the stand, then we'll we'll apply that piece. But it makes no sense to me at all to do it now. It just I just think that's you're asking for trouble. I think that way madness lies. So that is the parts from part two complete. Um, we are now moving on to all the new parts from part three. <laughs> a bit weird right but um i had to film this insert because i didn't press record <laughs> it's the first time i've ever done this but it, it happened so i didn't press record thankfully i didn't actually build anything in this section what i did was i showed you uh this piece here that um you're about to see us uh, put together now all i do is i explain where the glass goes that's it um, I don't do it on camera because you're about to find out for yourself this is not the fastest thing to do. So all I did was I showed the part, I showed the glass and said this glass is going to go in there and we're going to ease it in around. That's all you've missed. Um, so it was a it was a 30 second overlay that for whatever reason didn't record. But instead you've got just a little bit of extra scot, you lucky people. Anyway, back to the show. Okay, so that's that one finally in. I want to say finally because that took me a good 10 minutes to get that in. Um, may the odds be ever in your favour when you come to doing this, because it takes a lot of patience. If you find yourself getting wound up, walk away from it, because you'll end up breaking one of those beams. That took a while. Honestly, that was a lot of um, squash and squeeze to get that to do what it was supposed to do. And um, yeah, I was worried the whole time I was going to break the frame, and it wasn't good. But it's done now. Uh, the next thing we have is we have these two uh, bubble windows here. Oh, that's that one there and that one there. Now, these are going to glue to the inside of here. Now, again, if you use super glue, it's going to frost. That's what's going to happen. So we're not going to do that. Again, I'm using a touch of the micro crystal clear to install one here and one here. So I'm going to get that glued in and we will take a look. So those are the two observer blister windows installed. Now, I can show you the, you can see the uh, micro crystal clear there. It's not much. It really isn't much. Again, it's not load bearing. You don't need it to hold any weight or anything. You just need a glue that will hold it in place. And that is exactly what that's going to do um, without steaming up the windows. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to take the Astrodome. And the Astrodome is just going to screw into place, which is, uh, that's a good thing. Uh, so it's got a little Astrodome, eh? And that is this piece here. Uh, and this is going to screw into place with a single... BP screw. So let me get my screwdriver ready and we'll get that done. Okay. Let's take our dome. I'm just going to pop that one in just in there like so. 
then take the single BP screw into the slot here and screw this one in place. It's very bizarre that um, we've done all that um, <laughs> gluing and squeezing and fit the windows and this one just screw it in. Seems really weird, but that's what they chose to do. So that's what we will do. So that is the Astrodome in. And that's how that's now looking. Lovely stuff. Spectacular. Really nice. Really nice. Okay, now we have one more piece to do. Uh, we are going to screw a piece to the front section here. So let me just grab that. So turning this one over, I'm going to take our upper fuse large nose, which is this piece here. And we are going to sit this in here like so. And we're going to hold that in place with a single BP screw. So let's get that screw ready. Okay, so this is where we're going, just in here. Let's get this one screwed in and tightened up. You don't want to over tighten because we've got into plastic. But that is how we're looking. Lovely stuff. Uh, but now, we're not doing anything at all with this very large cockpit floor that we've got here. Um, now, I assume we go something like that. Not exactly like that, um, but you get the idea. Um, more like that. But you get the idea. So it's um, it's looking lovely. I mean, the colour on this is absolutely beautiful. It really is. Um, it's looking It's looking good already. Yeah, it's looking really nice. I'm excited for this one. This is gonna this is gonna be a beautiful thing. When this is done, this is going to be a beautiful, beautiful thing. Let's have a so that's that one done. I mean, it, right, so it's delicate work. Um, but I think that's that's just the way this is. This is the way this this if you're expecting some hulking great lump of part work model, that's not what this is. I think until you get to the wings, where you're doing a lot of small um fiddly work, light work, it's it's the way it is. This is it's like an airfix kit on steroids, you know. It's um, it's got the intricacy of of a sprue kit on some parts, not all parts, but then you have the added element of these these big chunky metal parts and the electrics and the. So it's going to be an interesting one. This it's going to be a very interesting one. But I mean, it's looking nice. Seeing that, seeing you can kind of see our first proper look at the Lancaster, and it looks really nice. Um, if you just stick around with the build instructions, thank you for stopping by. Please remember to like. And subscribe, it helps channel massively. Um, if you stick around for our uh, our talks, uh, as I said, necessity is the mother of invention. So you tend to find a lot of things that uh, we use today were originally invented for something else, and nine times out of ten they're invented for you know war. Um, I mean, a good one. I don't I don't know if it's true. So don't quote me on this one. I believe super glue was developed for um the korean war to glue soldiers back together and if it wasn't it was for the vietnam war but the original purpose of super glue was to glue people back together which is why it glues your fingers together better than anything else um but that's not what we're talking about what we're talking about is world war ii and um a dental hygienist had an idea an american dental hygienist had an idea of a weapon that could be used in america's fight against japan um <laughs> this sounds mental but it's true um, so, what at the time uh, Japan was was renowned for was a lot of the houses were, were very much wood um, and paper, paper pagodas, so paper windows and things like that. There was it was there was a lot of that, um, particularly on areas they were attacking. Now, flying repeatedly to Japan and back is not the easiest thing to do um, when they want to cause maximum damage but make minimal journeys. So fire would uh would you know would work on largely wooden and paper buildings fire would go up quick now apparently uh a very popular thing amongst um insurance claims uh arson attacks is to take a rat tie a burning rag to the rat's tail post it through the letterbox the premise that you're uh attacking it'll run round and make lots of little fires all over the place and they won't be able to determine where the original fire started so I've heard. Using that principle, the dental hygienists had the idea that if you could start lots and lots and lots and lots of little fires in Japan, 
there's no way it could be combated. It would just rip through the place. And it's like, right, but how do you start lots and lots and lots and lots of little fires? Well, you need something to carry incendiary devices. So they'd have very small little incendiary devices that would kick off about a 12-inch flame. <laughs> Almost like a flare. But lots of them. So, you know, a few thousand of these in one drop, but we want them to go all over the place and they've got to get in somewhere good. If you could get them inside a building, even better. Um, but how do you do that? Well, the theory was, if you could attach little incendiary devices to bats, yeah, I said that right, bats, drop a load of bats on Japan, the bats would then go and fly off and they would nest in rooftops all over Japan. And then when the time was right, they'd all go off. And all of a sudden, hundreds of fires all break out in the roofs of buildings all over Japan. Um, now, it sounds nuts, but there's a logic to it. You think, okay, well, that does... It's plausible. Um, but there's some questions. <laughs> right. One... Where do we got these bats from? Two, what incendiary device are we going to make that's going to attach to a bat that's going to be able to carry somewhere? Um, then how do we make them all go off at the same time? How do we get these bats to Japan once we've done this? Um, and how do we know they're going to react the way they're going to react and fly where they're going to go? Um, well, that's going to require some testing. And um, this went all the way, right? This wasn't like... An idea we've thought about it we're not going to do it no 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 this went into practice so the bat bomb was very much a real thing um so that is the principle behind the bat bomb uh we are going to talk in the next one about how they were going to get the bat bomb to work um and it did work this is the insane thing the bat bomb worked it's mad but i swear to you the bat bomb worked we'll take a look at a bat bomb because there are pictures, um, and we'll we'll talk about exactly how the bat bomb was going to work in the next one, issue four, which will be coming up very very soon indeed. Um, if it's not up tonight, it'll be up tomorrow. Um, but I'll try and get it up tonight. Um, that's all from me. In a world where you can be anything, will just be nice. Please remember to like and subscribe. You can contact us at buildingtheboys@outlook.com, um, and we'll be back very 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 soon with issue four of Hashet's Build the Lancaster Bomber. Take care, and I will see you then.